What up, y'all? Welcome to our first Two Lost Conversation, uh, where we talk with some of the artists on the platform about their experience, what they like, what they don't like, um, some of the things that they're experiencing in their, in their career, and we are blessed to have with us today, Isaac Zell. Man, how you doing? Good, man. Thank you for having me. Uh, my pleasure. My pleasure. So when I asked the Two Lost team who we should start with, you know, who we should interview first... Your name came up, so I definitely want to dive into your story a little bit, get to know you. Um, I know that we just talked the briefly, you know, before we started the recording, and that you're you're from Vancouver. But when did this music journey start for you, man? When did it all kind of kick off? I I think it started for me. I like started taking it seriously when I was about fifteen. But okay. I've been making music since I was about eleven. Nice. And yeah, then how 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 old are you now? If that's something that you're revealing I'm to your family. Okay, 25. dope. Yeah. So you you get you've got your reps in you you get your your ten thousand shower your ten thousand hours up yeah um, so why why did you get into this like what was the what was the into inspiration music. yeah um, so when I was young my dad was really into Marvin Gaye uh, Jay Z mm. so I was just kind of around it when I was growing up I have like the the Marvin Gaye vinyls and stuff so just listening to the music over and over again and just feeling what I felt when I did listen to it. Mm -hmm. convinced me that this was the artistic medium that I wanted to take to um, be able to communicate with people and just express the way I was feeling. Because yeah. I've always been really into art, just in general. Nice. Did you say Marvin Gaye and Jay-Z? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So that's like a, I mean, that's a obviously great uh, legends. Uh, I guess we can we can call Jay-Z a legend, even though if he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's alive today. I don't think oh, yeah. it... Uh, I think we should be calling more people legends if they deserve that status, even if they haven't yeah. passed away. But that's a, yeah, that's that's an that's an amazing. It's a wide range of artists, though, right? Like you have Marvin Gaye, um, and then you have Jay Z rapping, um, and totally different content as well. So I think that's, I, I can see where where you draw that inspiration from for sure. Yeah, I was I was really exposed to a bunch of music when I was growing up. Um, Led Zeppelin was another one that he would play all the time. Dope. And then obviously you make music for yourself, but who do you think your music resonates with the most? Like what type of, of, of people, you know, is your music resonating with? Um, I would say mainly the, I don't want to say nerds, but probably nerds. <laughs> <'Cause>, okay. <laughs> I mean, lately, because I am one, self-proclaimed. So uh, lately my music has been um, centered a lot more on um, things that I... I about five years ago, would not think are cool, but mm -hmm. today I do. So, so um, yeah, it's just more I would say alternative than um, I guess like the mainstream sound right now, which I, I think is great by the way because I mm -hmm. did dabble in the mainstream sound with my last album, um, and I think it's great. I think there's a time and place for it, but for me, I just kind of wanted to more um, experiment, maybe get away with saying things that you don't really hear in a rap song, right. I, I think it's dope that, you know, well, I think that artists really connect with people when they are confident in who they are, no matter who that is or, or how you describe yourself, whether you think you're a nerd or whether you think you're the coolest person on, on, the, on the earth, like it, it, that confidence and really owning like authentically who you are, I think allows you to really tap in and, and communicate with people um, of a similar background or mindset. So, yeah, you know, I think no, that's absolutely. the most important. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Now, I know that, you know, just from my experience, this road is tough. You know, it, pursuing music is ridiculously tough. There's a lot of highs and a lot of lows. How are you feeling about things like right now and where you're at? For me, I kind of just take it moment by moment. I'm very... uh if something good happens, I, I take it at face value for what it is. I don't let my get so I don't let myself get too high off of that. And then if something bad happens, I'm able to act in the inverse. And it takes a long time for me to be able to master this. But at this point, um, I've been been able to get here. Uh, I just think the the biggest thing for me is to just completely be happy with the result of what I make, and everything else is just secondary. So if I go into it with my that mindset. And it doesn't really bother me if something goes wrong, if it takes a little bit longer to get to where I want to get to. That's part of the reason why I kind of have decided not to do any major label deals and just pretty much work completely by myself with the production and the mixing and mastering. Mm -hmm. 
Dope. Do you have any advice for other artists, like in those moments where you feel lost, um, if you feel super lost, like how do you, how do you get out of those moments? Like what do you think an artist should do? Because it's daunting, right? Like it, it's yeah. it's a very tough task to kind of cut through the clutter these days. So I can see, and I see people tweeting a lot about just feeling lost and not really knowing what to do. Do you have any advice for those artists to, to maybe kind of get out of that rut? Yeah, definitely. I think feeling lost right now is, is very reasonable considering just the state of things. But um, the way I kind of deal with that is I just constantly keep my brain and my mind busy. So I'll wake up every morning and make music no matter what. And every night I'll just read until I fall asleep. So every night I'm, I'm consuming literature. I'm able to, to use that to translate that back into what I write the next day. So when my mind is constantly focused on this one thing and just creating nonstop, I don't really find that I have the time to stress about things that would be worrying. And I'm not really saying to, to brush that off and not confront that head on because it's good mm -hmm. to do that. But um, I think just keeping your, your mind busy is the best way for me to really not so much brush away like the, the feelings of, of angst or anxiety, but more so just to have the... Uh, the equipment to deal with it better. Right. So, and, and I know oftentimes, you know, a lot of artists are pursuing this alone, right? They don't really have a team yet. Um, I don't know what your team looks like, but I do know that, that Kayvon works with you as, as, a, as a manager. How did you, who was the first person that you would consider like your team? And then how did you meet Kayvon and how did that management situation come together? I think, oh man, I've been working with Kayvon since I was about 15, so oh, wow. I'm trying to crawl back into the depths of my memory, <laughs> but um, I, I, I was working with this local uh, record label in Vancouver uh, for about a, a, a year, mm -hmm. and Kayvon was writing on this blog called Good Music All Day, mm -hmm. and I was doing covers on YouTube, like remixes of just random songs, and he would do write-ups of me, and from there we just kind of built like this connection and then he came to vancouver because his his wife his now wife is from here mm. so he was here seeing her family and he had tickets to a macklemore concert which is really <laughs> funny and he texted me he's like hey i know you live here the person i was going to this concert bailed i have an extra ticket do you want to come so i went with him to the macklemore concert and um just on the way back i was 15 so i would i would ask anything i had like no filter i just said can you manage me? And like, we didn't have that relation prior to that, but he thought about it for a day and was like, yeah, I'll manage you. That's super dope. That's a, that's a dope story because, you know, I didn't know it went back that far and yeah. you were only 15 at the time. And Kayvon obviously wasn't working at Genius at no. the time. I don't even know if Genius existed. It probably did maybe in its infancy. Like, I think Rap Genius. Yeah, it was might have, might have been Rap Genius. But, you know, I think that story really just highlights how both you as an artist have evolved and then him as a manager and in the positions that he is in now, you know, obviously you've gotten um, your skills have, have enhanced, your presence has enhanced. And I'm sure that, you know, as a manager, like his knowledge and his relationships um, have grown. So you guys kind of have grown together, um, you know, and just kind of have grown as a team. And I think that's dope. Is there anybody else that you consider like on the team or is it really just you two rocking out right now? So it's me, Kayvon. Uh, obviously like my friends and family at two lost for sure. I would definitely consider them part of my team, Courtney, Greg, uh, dope. Lucas. Uh, and I have a really good friend of mine, Murad, who um, we have this series where I make a song and music video every week and I produce mix master and then shoot the video on my phone. And he's been a buddy of mine for a really long time. No label, no budget. Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. So, I was going to yeah. talk about that next. So we'll, we'll oh, con continue. I'll, I'll have it be a separate question, but my bad. I, I cut you okay, off. No, 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 no. Uh, my buddy Murad, he, um, he films. Like he I got this little gimbal for my phone and he just props up my phone on it, films me for the day, gives me the footage, and then I, I edit it. And then that's it. It's the extent of my team. Dope, dope, dope. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the team, the team, 
well, the team is usually just yourself in the beginning, and that's you know that's just what it is until you know I know that a lot of artists make the mistake in in kind of bringing people on too soon and calling them actual team members just because they want help, not because they're the right person for what for that role, right? Yeah, oh, I've done that for sure. <laughs> yeah, you, you you feeling lost and you're just kind of doggy paddling, you know, looking for a lifeboat, and you know you kind of latch on to whoever reaches out, even if that person you know, may not have the skill set um, or, or maybe in it for the wrong reasons. Um, and, and then it just it, then it just doesn't work out. Um, so let, let's go back to the series that you have. I did. So it's a weekly thing called No yeah. Label, No Budget. Um, talk to us about that, where the inspiration came from and, and what, what it is you do on a weekly basis. So the thing with No Label, No Budget was I, I realized just through, through my years of doing this that the best way to grow, at least for me, was just being consistent and dropping music frequently of high quality. Mm -hmm. And I realized that if I'm able to drop this music every week, um, at least on one platform, then I can repurpose that platform onto TikTok, onto other platforms. And then at the end of the month, at, at the end of every season, five episodes, I would just package it as an EP onto Spotify. So this way I've covered all of my bases. I got YouTube, short form video content, streaming platforms every month that I'm hitting. And the main point of this this series was to kind of inspire other creatives, other independent artists who do feel lost, like they don't really know what to do, and mm -hmm. show them that, look, it is possible to produce, to mix, to master, to do all of this stuff yourself, and to still have it sound good. Because when I was, like, growing up, sorry, dry, dry throat. All good. <laughs> when, I was, when I was growing up, the thing that I noticed was I constantly kept putting limitations on myself because I thought, I shouldn't mix that, I'm not an engineer. I shouldn't master that, I'm not an engineer. I shouldn't touch that keyboard, I'm not a producer. But the more I kind of allow those things to, to flow within each other and realize that this is just all one art form, and if I can get good at all of the, the aspects within this art form, then the only thing that's gonna do is help me when it comes to, to creating. And at the same time, show other artists that they can take things into their own hands, they can seize the means of what they produce, they don't have to have other people siphoning off of their surplus labor nonstop, and they mm -hmm. can do it independently. Yeah. And I think it also gives you structure, right? So that you're not like fishing for what to do today. You know, like, you know what the deal is. You're working on your next, no label, no budget. You got to work on this song. You got to work on these visuals. And it gives you consistent content to post on socials. Yeah. Um, so you're not waking up thinking, oh, what do I post today? You know what you're posting today. Yeah. And, and it's also really great. So say like I was to drop a song and I didn't get the results that I wanted to get. I don't have time to focus on that that grief, that sadness, because I'm mm. I gotta be working, so it doesn't matter. The next one will do well. Dope. And that's no. the way I to go with it. Yeah, no, I love it. I always encourage artists to think about a content series, right? Because of all the things that we just talked about, just giving it the structure, um, getting it, it forces you to get your reps in, right? You know, no matter what, you're putting out a song. So you're going to get better at songwriting. If you're producing, you're going to get better at, at production. It just kind of gives you that, gives you that structure. But branding it also is dope because like let's just say because i think no label no budget you're on like episode five right or six yeah five. so you know if somebody finds out about episode five and they like it they know that there's a one two three four right mm -hmm. so so where are they gonna go they're gonna go check out one two three four so just exactly. imagine when you get to no label no budget 50 you know now they can yeah. go down this long history of the series, they got 49 more episodes to check out and they can get really lost in your world. Yeah, I, I talked about this on TikTok briefly when I'm, because I, I do this thing on TikTok where I'll try and help out other artists when I have like, time. But I use this analogy of like a fish hook, like every time you drop a song or a piece of content, you're just throwing another fish hook, a fish hook out into the water mm -hmm. and you're just waiting. Someone has to swim by it, catch onto it. And then you caught a fan and it's like a passive way of accumulating fans because you're doing all the work you're throwing it out there. It's just a matter of time before someone sees the content that you put out there, get drawn to it, and then there you go. You got a fan. For sure. Now, so that's the beginning, right? So you, you get the fan. Now, what do you make sure you do to kind of engage with that fan and take that fan from just maybe an initial fan to hopefully a super fan at some point? What are some of the things that you're doing to do that? 
I just try and be brutally honest whenever like mm. I'm interacting with them. Like I'm, I'll be on TikTok, I'll be replying to comments nonstop. Um, Instagram, like if the people DM me, I reply all the time. Uh, well, when I see it, when I can. Mm-hmm. Um, but on like TikTok, for example, I don't know. Someone asked me about my my hair routine, and then I went into like this long spiel about how I was scared of balding, <laughs> like stuff like that, and like. <laughs> It's just that's, that's why I wear. That's why I wear the hat, man. That's why I wear. The hat. It's just all of us, all the guys, man. It's like once you turn twenty, that's like where you start worrying. But um, <laughs> I was just talking to like people on TikTok, just like people who reach out about things that I don't really think other like hip hop artists would want to talk about because it might be like embarrassing or self deprecating. But uh, I don't really care about that kind of stuff. Like I'll be yeah. self deprecating all day. That's how you really connect with people, man. Having those real conversations, um, you know, being being comfortable talking about your insecurities and things like that. I think that's how you really connect with people. So I think you're doing doing the right thing. Um, be- before we wrap this up, man, I want to talk about Two Lost a little bit and your experience on the platform. How long have you been releasing music uh, via Two Lost? Oh, I've been on Two Lost for about Jesus three three years. So I I went under. A different name. I went under Zach Fluids, which is like my original rap name. Okay. And I hated it. I hated it. I was super embarrassed by it all the time. <laughs> and um, I really wanted to change my rap name. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't able to do that through the other uh, services, the other streaming or distribution companies. And then I, I was linked with Greg. And Greg told me, he's like, hey, if I can get all of your old music, transfer the name, and fix it on all the streaming platforms, would you give two loss to try it? And this was like in the infancy stages of two loss. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, man, absolutely. So he did that. And then I stuck with two loss for a couple of releases after that. And I was just amazed, like in- incredible staff. Everybody was super nice. Immediately landed some editorial playlists on Spotify, which I wasn't doing before. Mm. And um, I just thought it was really, really nice people at two loss. And that's what drew me. That, that's what drew me to stay there. So, yeah, I mean, I think they do a great job just kind of like listening to what artists need um, uh, in a in a self service distribution platform, um, and then trying to build the tech to 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 plug that hole, right? Yeah. I think a lot of a lot of the services um, on the platform are very uh, forward looking. Um, you know, you have the beat bread integration. There's a lot of different things on the platform. Um, but and I've tried all of the features. I tried the beat bread thing, great results. Um, they even have that cover license thing where if you want to cover a song, you can just buy a license for like fifteen bucks. It's, mm-hmm. it's really great. Yeah, and I think that's what that that's what we're trying to do, man. And just continue to listen, to, can you continue to have these conversations with artists like yourself. So understand the pain points, why they're feeling kind of lost and out there, and and, and build the tools, the technology tools and platform to be able to to serve artists and and just give them the the best opportunity to to perform, so that you guys can focus on the creative um, and yeah. do, doing what you do best. Uh, feels like too it feels like i don't have to worry too much about um like the the technicalities of the distribution and things like that like i just have to make the music and that's all i really want that's what i guess any artist would really want for sure for sure before we get out of here man is there any any other words of encouragement or words of advice that you would have for for other artists that are coming up um let them know absolutely i i always say the same thing but if you can, save up, get your own studio equipment, learn mm-hmm. how to produce, mix, and master. You're going to save a lot of money in the long run because you're not going to be spending it on studio time. And you have full control over the way your, your music sounds. And once you just get into that process of making music every day, your own equipment, your own space, not with a time crunch or anything like that, that's when I saw a lot of results and I stopped putting limitations on myself from what I felt that I should and shouldn't be doing. If you want to do it, just do it. So yeah, man, I think that's amazing advice because you're you're saving you're saving money, um, possibly saving time because you don't have to wait for anybody to to you know your engineer might be booked or studio time might yeah. be booked and you know it's just so valuable to be able to do yeah. what you do and I know. Go ahead. I'm sorry. The goal with that would just be to eventually become the engineer. So mm-hmm. the only person you're relying on is yourself and. 
for me, that's where I found that I had the epiphany that I don't need to really ask of favors of too many people anymore because I can do it myself. Yeah, I think that's the difference between artists like yourself and artists that sit back and make excuses, right? Oh, man, I don't have this. I'm not doing this because I don't have money. I'm not doing this because I don't have an engineer, you know, whereas artists like yourself are just figuring it out. You know, you may not be the best engineer out the gate, but as you learn over time, you know, you'll be oh, just yeah. you'll be just as good as the person that you're paying. Yeah, you can go back to my old music and it sucks. I'll be the first to tell you that. <laughs> um, but I, that's why I leave it up because I want people to be able to hear it and be like, oh. wow, okay, started like this, sounds like this now. Um, <laughs> Dad, that, 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 that's another good point as, as, as we wrap this up, man. That's why I like social media. I would love our, our Facebook page. I would leave all the old posts up from our Facebook page um, yeah. so that people can see like, how everything just gets better. Every, like the graphic yeah. design got better. You know, our, our messaging got better. The music, yeah. the videos, they got to see that journey. That's crucial. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like if you go to my TikTok page, like if you scroll all the way down, embarrassment, super cringe. <laughs> I didn't even know how to use my talking voice. I was like vocal frying and all this. Um, and I just leave that up because like I'm not going to, I don't want to hide like parts of the process. It's just, it started cringe and now it's less cringe. And that's just kind of the goal. Mm. So like, I don't want people to think I just started and it right. had this production value. It's not realistic. Right. So uh, one last question. So if you could snap your fingers and, and you got whatever it is you feel like you need right now, what is that? Like, what do you feel like you could really use to help you continue making progress? Hmm. Wow, that's a good one. Or is, is it just continuing doing what you're doing and you're loving the journey and it can be that too, or? Yeah, I don't think it would be anything like material. I don't think it would be like a commodity, but um, I would say just peace of mind, like just mm. to constantly be able to get into the studio with a clear head as opposed to sometimes bringing in whatever other drama I'm going through into the studio and then trying to create through that. If I can mm -hmm. just have a nice peace of mind every time I get into the studio, that would be amazing. And there are ways to achieve that. So I'm working towards that. Is there stuff that you're doing? Is it, is it diet? Is it meditation, yoga? What, what kind of stuff are you, are you doing yeah, to help so achieve that? It's a diet, of course, but um, exercise, like literally just lifting weights. Every time I'm done that, I'm too tired to focus on the BS. Nice. Yeah. Dope. Well, this has been a great conversation, man. I really appreciate you being the first guest on our Two Lost Conversations. Uh, no. um, Thank you for having me. For sure. I'm not sure who we'll have next. Um, I don't even have it scheduled or booked, but I'm sure it'll be another interesting conversation. But until then, this is Isaac Zale, and we can find him. Give him your socials. At Isaac Zale on everything except Twitter. Then it's at Isaac Zale BS. Because I got banned the first time. <laughs> how'd, you, how'd you get banned? I don't know. I think I was spamming because I would reply, like, when people would give me compliments, I would say the same thing. I would say love with this little emoji. Uh -huh. And I did that, like, maybe hundreds of times a day. And then I got banned. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Dope. So Isaac Zale everywhere except for Twitter, where he's Isaac Zale BS. Holla at him. Check out the music. He's dope. Um, until next time, I'll see y'all. Peace.